The first section of Molly's meander home from the OGA 60 party would be with the OGA East Coast Cruise, which had been arranged in part for the benefit of us visitors from further south. The object was to cruise along the Essex coast and cross the Thames estuary and visit the Medway, after which we were to part ways. The first day of the cruise was a passage race to the Walton backwaters. Nicky helmed in the light but gusty wind, picking our way out of the Orwell, past Felix Doe docks and across the shallow bay known as Sunken Pie to the entrance of secret waters. First day of the East Coast cruise and we are at Stone Point which is just inside the Walton Backwaters also known as Secret Water uh, in Arthur Ransom's uh, stories and it's a really rather lovely location. So the fleet has arrived and is all uh, anchored up sand at Stone Point where we are going to go ashore for our uh, barbecue tonight. The tide is just starting to ebb and it's turned the boats uh, around. We're kind of across the wind. In that direction you can see over the sandbank and in the background there you can see Felixstone docks and also Harwich and the town of Felixstowe in the distance as well. And sailing across the top of the uh, grass is an enormous cargo ship. Turning this way, our tender. And up there, the rest of the fleet of the anchor. But more or less high tide, the water's just turned and they started to ebb and In stark contrast to the heavy rain of the last few days, it was a beautiful golden evening. We brought barbecue packs prepared by the cafe at Suffolk Marina, as well as bottles of the celebratory old gaffer beer, and we all had stories to share. I was particularly interested to chat to those who'd participated in the Round Britain Challenge. Several of these were local and had in effect finished, whereas others were still had some way until completion, the furthest being Helford River in Cornwall. The shore at Stone Point is sandy and ideal for coming ashore, but progressively becomes mud up the channel. Brian noticed that Puffinbach had been anchored ambitiously shallow and was now aground. He was concerned that if he didn't make a dash for it, there might not be enough water to even get the tender to it, so he made a swift exit. I helped him carry his dinghy down to the water's edge, but unfortunately we had not noticed that everyone had carried their dinghy to the sandy point to launch, and we were soon squelching in the mud. When Brian had been successfully launched, I realised that my feet were firmly held by the mud, and I promptly fell over in this black sticky ooze much to the amusement of the rest of the fleet. The evidence of that slip-up would take several days to remove from clothes and boat.
See you next time. It's 8.30. Just leaving West Mersey Sailing Club for the mooring here tonight. Last night. And uh, en route to Queenborough. What a different day it is today. Jump forward in the schedule because uh, the wind is due to switch around to come from the south. So if we want to sail south, we should take a fair wind today. So I'm going to get the last of the ebb out of the black water and get myself down into the medway and the swale. of the black water it's looking south so over there is the ray sand been across there but there's not enough water today some wind turbines Bradwell nuclear power station and that's looking up the black water the tides ebbing now looking east and there is West Mersey where we've come from and the Mersey Island shore the safe water mark Wallet Spitway which actually marks a gap in the sandbanks looking out there towards the Gunfleet Sand Wind Turbine Array Running around the scene here, it just looks like open sea. The amazing thing about the Thames Estuary, it looks like open sea, but there's lots of sand on it. So, looking back east there, west direction, um, that's where we set out from. I can just see Bradwell Power Station and the wind turbines on there. The ray sand there is very shallow. It would be much more convenient to go across there, but not enough water. So, we've got to come out and find a safe gap through this sandbank and visibly lurking beneath the sea. You can't mess about with these spitways. They're going between two safe water marks and the gap between two sandbanks. And there's still only just three metres of water, so that means there's about half a metre of water between the bottom of my centre plate and uh, the sandbank. And this is the safe water passage to keep a very careful eye on my voyage. More enormous sandbanks behind that South Cardinal boy over there. And we're just mooching through the safe water. And I can start to see the North Kent coast appearing. We'll be looking for the entrance to the river Medway and from there the Swale. What a lovely day. Such a contrast to yesterday. The impressive explosions there as various munitions go crump. That was a uh, foul mess. About nine miles away from here. So conditions are really flat now. There's a little bit of breeze. The main sail full. We've got looking straight up the river Crouch there, and then turning towards the southwest. Thames Estuary, south end in view, and then turning towards the south. The North Kent coast plainly visible now. Going a bit slower now to a Punching a little bit with the last of the ebb. But it's a glorious day to be on the water. So we're currently sailing directly towards a sandbank. We're about to tack. You can see that the water changes colour and I can just see some 
waves breaking where the top of the sandbank is just emerging as the tide drops. Definitely time to tack. The wind has filled in beautifully, so we've got about a force three now and the angle is just right so we're now heading straight along my track to meet the Kent coast to be able to go into the River Medway and we're singing along the tide has turned and it's just filling in behind us so we're doing five knots now and in an hour's time I think we'll be doing six absolutely glorious but the the big gaffers in front of us, they're all their sails set, looking absolutely wonderful. It's absolutely gorgeous day on the water now. So that container ship is making about 15 knots down the Prince's Channel. We're following a, a parallel channel, there's a sandbank in between. But when we close with the Prince's Channel, we'll have to cross that at right angles to avoid any shipping but there actually doesn't seem to be a great deal about there's that big container ship and then there's a couple of smaller ones over there that's really any traffic we have to contend with so we turn the corner heading up the estuary Thames estuary now about to tack away from the north shore just see in the distance the Haven Gore Bridge that's something that would be interesting to pass through. Can we get through at high tide? It's a raising bridge and that takes through into the uh, into a roach in the river Crouch, which would have been a lovely adventure. But the ties didn't work for this trip, but uh, it leaves something to come back for. It's Brian on Puffin Bay. Just see the wind farms in the distance. channel and it's tacked again. We'll be over there shortly. Bye bye Essex disappearing behind our stern. Daisy Bell crossing our bow in the distance. The Red Sand Fort, a relic of the Second World War. During the night, our rigging has become covered in tiny threads of spider snook. Lots of tiny spiders on the boat. Just put up the asymmetric, looking very fine. It really does look like a kite. It's a big sail, it doesn't seem to be pulling awfully hard at this stage. The wind's dropped away to almost nothing exactly as forecast.
some kind of tanker at some speed. That's quite a bow wave. I think we're going to be rocking and rolling before too long. There's quite a bit of weight there. Uh oh. Here it comes. Let's dance. Approaching the mouth of the River Medway. You can see the industrial port in front of us. And that's the Isle of Sheppey. Stretching away down there. And the River Swale comes out there. Goes behind the Isle of Sheppey. There's a restricted area over there, just off the edge of the channel. Protected wreck the SS Richard Montgomery. We'll just see some of the superstructure showing above the water. Significant navigational hazard right at the entrance of the uh, River Medway. You can see we're just in the channel now. Lum, come to join us. Wonderful passage planning by all of us. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, we, we've just been um, talking to Queenborough and they've got um, a massive mooring boy that they say is happy to take all of us. Wow. So what we're thinking is putting Rely, Windbreaker, alongside first and then maybe us and one other on one side and then the other yourself popping back and uh, the other one I've lost and then yeah, on, um, on the other side so it'll be rafted up on one it'll be quite, quite enjoyable rather than the pontoons Sounds great Very industrial. <clears throat> Water tower. Kent is very flat. Some World War II fortifications. Another attractive church tower behind that. There's a massive fire that's been burning all afternoon. Huge ball of smoke. Molly is now entering her fourth river of the day. We started at West Mersey, which is on the River Blackwater, and crossed out and into the River Thames, and now the Medway, and we're about to enter the River Swale. Queenborough Yacht Club, picking up some moorings, and we're all rafting together.
fully into water. Yours is sort of way dry. I need it, need it. Because I've had, as I said, I, 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 I do this. I said, no, just pour the bloody stuff out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the way, Leaving Queenborough. We're downwind and down tide, down the swale, and just about to enter the Medway. The tide will be flooding soon, and that will help us get up to Chatham Dock. Just a short run today, but a very pleasant one, I think. Sandgate Creek and Anchorage that we might have used, but we went to Queensborough instead. Looks pretty derelict. Long pier, which is for the decommissioned Kings North Power Station, which was uh, coal and oil, it's been replaced by a gas fired power station on the same site. So I imagine this was a conveyor for delivering the coal. More fortifications, they look Napoleonic, but uh, I bet they were used in the 20th century wars. Very shifty winds here. We're just running into Gillingham. There's another big shift. Every time I think I'm going to make it, I have to throw another tack in. Very hard work. That wind shifted through about 40 degrees. very large basin where those cranes are it actually links through on the other side of the reach to where we're going in to Chatham. Tides are odd here as well. The tide is rising but the flow of tide is against us as we go up river. I don't understand that, that's odd. Right, let's try attacking again. There you have.
not too bad. Still moving at least. All the fun of the fair. Chatham was a strategically important dockyard for the British Navy since the mid-16th century. The site with its beautiful Georgian buildings is now managed by the Dockyard Trust as a visitor attraction. There's a great deal to see, especially for those of us with an interest in the history of seafaring. The yard contains the only remaining Royal Navy ropery, a building a quarter of a mile long used to make the enormous cables needed to rig ships during the great days of sail. The ropery is still in commercial operation, producing ropes from a variety of fibres. A more recent exhibit, HMS Cavalier, a Royal Navy destroyer launched in 1944, which served until 1972, and now acts as a memorial commemorating the 11,000 sailors and 142 destroyers lost during World War II. Other highlights for me included HMS Gannett, a ship of both sail and steam, built for the Royal Navy in 1878 on the Medway, the RNLI Historic Lifeboat Collection and Three Slip, a gigantic open building constructed like an inverted wooden ship. rang up one day because his son-in-law knew of this up in Maryport mm -hmm. and he kept ignoring it, sinking and rusting away and he said he knew Derek didn't want to be the equivalent of a tusher. So Derek then rang me and he said, oh, well, do you think we'll get it going for about £50,000? If we've got ten of us, what do you think? Well, I'm still feeling sore for not getting the battleship. <laughs> and I, I had succeeded in buying a railway engine after that. Got that out of the scrapyard. That's on the bluebell now. But uh, uh, I, I just said to Derek, "Bloody good idea. Let's have a go." <laughs> and uh, it's been downhill ever since, really. So <laughs> you know, we're all impoverished. None of us got two eighties to rub together. But you've got all this to play with. Yes, yeah. It raises steam at 120 psi. There's the pressure gauge up there, and you can see that level of water. 